up everyone? See, I didn't say what's up guys. I said what's up everyone. So Matt Happel, don't get angry at me. Uh, I'm out here at a spot that we've been trying to get to for a long time. And I just, either the truck was down or we were racing somewhere else. And so we've missed a bunch of races here. But it's kind of a unique spot because it's out here on uh, like an old helipad. I don't think they use it for that anymore, but there's nothing out here. Like if you look around, nobody to bother no houses no nothing like i even the airport itself is pretty slow so i mean it's great to come out here and test the downside i guess depending on you know what you're out here for is the surface is a pretty gnarly asphalt surface so big rock asphalt pretty much riding on the tops of these rocks so like anything in between your tire never touches it's always going to be slicker than usual not as nice as concrete i mean not as nice as some you know newer asphalt it's old got a bunch of cracks in it it's going to be a little bumpy so it's a worst case scenario surface and you know that's what i wanted to test so we're going to try it out with the slicks i didn't bring a jack so i don't know if i'm going to be able to uh try out the radials as well but one thing that i do need to make sure of is i'm probably just going to do you know maybe 330 at the most but i'm really just trying to figure out my power control tables so when i let go of the trans brake i have uh basically everything is everything is based on time and so where my boost comes in the timing retards that i have it's all based on time as soon as i let go of the button one of the or a couple of the tables that i've been trying to utilize is uh you know a timing retard based on rpm and time so I'm telling the computer I want to be no higher than a certain RPM at a certain time after I let go of the button. So it's it's like a rough means of traction control, but it's not wheel speed based. So I don't call it what you want. I wouldn't call it traction control. I would just call it another means of power control. Um, but I never really got it, uh, you know, all that great on the new converter. On the old converter, we had it set up pretty good. There was, you know, low, medium and, and high based on the amount of grip that there was. And so I could just select it on the dash to, you know, be for, uh, to give me power control for the, or the appropriate power control for the road. So now I have to kind of rebuild those for this new converter because RPM does something totally different when you change a converter, uh, you change some other stuff in there. So I'm going to basically lean on that table really, really hard by putting the kind of power and the kind of launch RPM that I know is going to spin. So I want to see if I overshoot it, can I get these tables to uh, settle the car down enough to at least salvage the pass? It's not going to be fast, but I want to salvage it. I want to keep myself straight. I want to make sure that it doesn't just carry wheel speed like crazy and I go nowhere. So two things that I'm going to do. The time and retard, I've already uh, set those up. I'm just going to adjust the RPM that they like need to come in at. But with this new version 6, there's an RPM or a rev limiter offset that we can use. And so basically what I'm going to do is take the main rev limiter and adjust it based on that same table. So at a certain RPM uh, and a, or at a certain time after I let go of the button, I'm going to implement a rev limiter basically. So instead of putting in a specific rev limiter, I have to subtract from the overall rev limiter in this table. So I'll show you guys what that looks like uh, either in this video or in a uh, following video, but we'll see if it even works first. Um, no reason in showing it to you if it's not gonna work. So it's similar to what we do with a lot of front wheel drive cars where we have, I mean, ideally it's nice to have it based on your non-drive wheel speed. So in my car, it would be front wheel speed and I would tell it at this certain speed, I don't want it to go over a certain RPM. That way everything's way more consistent. I have to do it by time because I don't have any wheel speed sensors. So it's not gonna work as good, but if I get it right, then it'll work for a specific surface. So I can be in the ballpark. So we're gonna give that a try, but one of the things that I'm worried about, and another reason why I'm not gonna go crazy fast on this road is it just got finished snowing a whole bunch. And sorry for the wind noise if it's really gnarly, hopefully you can still hear me. Um, so everything underneath this road is wet. And on some of these sections, like you can see here, if I step on this, hopefully you guys can see it's steeping up the bottom through the cracks. So when my truck goes over this, the tire's going to get wet. So, I, so I, I've got to be really, really careful uh, with that. So we're not going to go crazy amount of speed or anything, but really it's kind of perfect for what I'm trying to test. I'm trying to test low, low traction scenarios. Can I get down a road using my safety net uh, power control tables? So get the truck out here uh it's on slicks right now i wish it was on radios um but yeah we'll we'll see what we can do see how slow we can go on this road
All right, guys. So this first one, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna do a burnout. I just want it to, I want to make sure that it does spin so that I can try out this uh, this traction table that I made. So probably gonna be really bad, but I need to get some data for where I need to, uh, you know, set these lines at or set set the uh, retard at. this is oh I'm an idiot I forgot to upload the new calibration so bad with no burnout and way too much in it so that was what I did at yellow belly the other day <laughs> all right Let me get the computer real quick upload it and then just do the same thing tires off. So I, I think the timing retard worked on the medium, but uh, either I stayed below where the limiters were needed or I set something up wrong in the limiters. I'm not too sure which one. So we'll take a look at the log and see what, see what it shows. All right, so I made a bunch of changes. We're gonna still try, uh, you know, no prep in the burnout, just a regular burnout to basically clear the tires off. So the limiter, I don't know, the limiter that I set in there still isn't engaging. So either I'm not making it there or it's not working. I'll have to take a look at the log and, and see if it went into those parameters. 
and just didn't activate maybe i have something set up wrong but i mean it was okay uh, like all the way through first uh, i mean it carries a little bit too much wheel speed once i put it in the second so i gotta figure out you know if i can get it to not carry and you know really run away with wheel speed into second gear then i mean it'll it'll work okay but it's uh it's not great these are these are pretty slow passes all right so i made a couple of changes i softened up the front softened up the rear a little bit and uh I'm allowing a little bit more wheel speed. I'm wondering if that table that I have to kind of wrangle in traction is actually doing a little bit too much. Like maybe I actually need the wheel spin with the slick or the wheel speed with the slicks. So I mean I don't really need it up top, but I might need it in first gear. So that's what I'm gonna try to allow this time around. If this one still goes the same like 60 foot, then I'm probably gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna lift the power control or raise it to the medium level to see if it's actually just limiting me a little bit too much i might be slowing myself down which is just as bad as spinning too much so i gotta find that happy medium but i mean I, this is why you test so you can find that happy medium all right here we go I'm sure it's a combination of a couple of things a little bit better of a burnout um but i i think i need to allow it to go that fast like i even actually felt the power control kind of slow me down briefly on that one too so even the medium level is probably a little bit too much uh you know uh power reduction so i mean i could try it on the fast one but i i think that actually is probably the threshold of of what it needs to be allowed to do in first gear Second gear, it's going to carry the wheel speed. That's fine. I don't want that to happen in first gear too much because I don't have enough momentum at that point. But second gear felt like it was accelerating pretty decent, so I think that's I think that's probably pretty good. I really wish I could test out the radials on this same surface. Yeah, these are much better, much better 60s and uh, much better overall eighth mile of times as well. I mean, they're still pretty freaking slow, but. I, they're workable so i mean and keep in mind this is uh, this is probably i mean that's basically three passes so if i'm third pair um then that's what the surface is going to be like actually probably even better because most people would be using prep 
I haven't used any prep yet. That's the first proper burnout that I've done. So I think the medium level that I have it at right now is is a good safety net. I don't think it'll, I, like I'm not positive it'll go a whole lot faster. I don't know, I'll probably try, I may try one where I have it no power control at all and just see what it does. I mean, hell, I mean, maybe it'll do better, but I really don't think so. I think I'm, I think the amount that I'm wrangling in the traction is just right right now. We just may not have enough mechanical grip. I mean, it may be a matter of putting some weight in the trunk, you know, trying to coax a little bit more mechanical grip out of it, but I don't know, that, that may be all it's got. I think that's a good enough time to beat some people. I don't think it's a good enough time to win a whole race with some of these dudes out here. But I mean, you never know. And we still got more power to put in it up top. Uh, like I could grab the scramble button on that one. I'm just, I'm not going all the way out because I don't actually know where the finish line is. Every single run so far, I've stopped before the finish line. So these eighth mile times that I'm seeing aren't aren't really any useful. I'm just looking at the short track stuff. So, all right, we'll look at the log and uh, see if maybe we can uh, do some more. All right, so this will probably be the last one. Uh, I'm gonna try it again on medium, but I'm gonna let it build a little bit more boost off the hit. Um, everything on the log, it looked like it stayed below the line, so I just need to give it a little bit more power, I think, and it'll it should it should be okay. Everything looked good. I just I, I just want to hit it a little bit harder. I made a little bit of adjustment to the front. Uh, I tightened it up just a tad. I think it came up too quick, but we'll see. All right, let's see if we can get a good burnout. I mean, overall, that's not absolutely terrible. All right, guys, that's it for the day. Um, I mean, all in all, pretty good. Uh, it's been a while since we've been on a surface like this, so, you know, I still got some work to do for sure, but that as a first outing on some slicks that I've been driving around on a lot. These slicks probably aren't the greatest, but I mean, it, it should have been better. So I got some work to do. I'm gonna look at the video and see kind of what the suspen suspension was doing and uh, hopefully I can coax a little bit more mechanical grip out of it. I still want to come back to this spot and try it with the radials because I think they will do better. If those don't do better, uh, we'll probably just go to a stiffer slick, so probably like a CO7. Right now these are actually 2810s because we've been using the DO6 compound uh, because it's a little bit softer. We used to use a softer compound because uh, our suspension settings were pretty much neutral. Now that we're actually uh, hitting the tire a little bit harder, I think if I'm going to use the slick, I'm probably going to have to use something like a CO7, uh, maybe something even a little bit stiffer like a bracket radial. But we got to test all of that stuff out, so we're almost back to square one with trying to figure out uh, what tire we're going to go with on the street for these new settings that we have. We might find out that the settings that we have in here just can't, you know, aren't good for the street and we're gonna have to make a bar change every time we go from street to track uh, back and forth. Which I really hope that's not the case. I hope it's just a tire that'll work good with these suspension settings on the street and a tire that'll work good for these suspension settings at the track. I really don't want to have to make a bar change all the time, but uh, if that's what we got to do, that's what we got to do. So we'll see. Like, share, subscribe. Also, if you want to help us out even more, click the join button. 
Uh, it's a small fee and you get access to uh, videos early or you get access to some uh, exclusive content. So uh, videos that nobody else gets to see or pictures or posts. Uh. So yeah, uh, I'm not too sure where we'll be next. I don't know if it's going to be uh, working with uh, Troy's car or if it's going to be back out with Liam. But we'll be back racing soon. Things Now that this whole you know, apocalypse winter uh, crap is over, we should be getting back to racing here pretty soon with the warm weather. So, Alright, we'll see you on the next one.